Hi guys, how's it going? What did you think of what I was sharing with you about yesterday's sermon? What I did for you today is I included a link to the audio of yesterday's sermon. And before we get into things here, I want you to listen to this, take a little bit and listen to this. And also, I also included notes. And today I wanted to kind of discuss, I wanted to discuss both this morning's devotions and I wanted to tie in one of the verses that had a lot to do with yesterday's sermon. Remember I was saying let's, you know, discuss these verses throughout the week? Well, here's something that I believe just really is important for us. I have 1 Chronicles 28, verse 9. David is speaking to Solomon here, and he says, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts, I mean the mind. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. It really got me, you know, as I said, when I was, you know, listening to this sermon, it really, really spoke to me. And I wanted to kind of go into yesterday's, I mean, this morning's devotions, wanted to see what you thought of it. You know, you ever, you notice the, I don't know how how to put it, but the, the, the depths in which Satan went, and it didn't take him much on how he got even eventually Adam to not only doubt God, but to give in to the lies he was telling them, and, and it resulted in their sin. And I believe that this morning's devotions, as well as yesterday's sermon, have a whole lot to do with each other, from at least from my perspective. Because I believe it involves just who we allow to have control of and influence of in our lives. You see, when we allow God to have the reins of our heart, to be in control of our heart, We're, it's not just being blessed, but we're in harmony with him. When we allow him to try us and see if there's any sin in our hearts, and when we confess and forsake that sin, we're not only in that fellowship and harmony with Christ, but the blessings abound. But if we're letting him be in control of our hearts in the first place and resisting Satan in his power, then we will avoid all that sin. But also on the same token, when we succumb to Satan's temptations, we give in to the lies and the, the uh, how do I put this, the lures, and allow him to control us. When we give in to sin and the seemingly endless pleasure, supposedly, that it gives us, the end result, unfortunately, is one of disaster, heartache, and judgment. And you see in this particular verse, in First Chronicles 28, verse 9, David is instructing Solomon, his son, as he is about to pass the reins of being king to this young man. He wants him to make sure that he not only knows God here, but here, and that he serves God with a whole and perfect heart. Now, one of the things I had learned in a uh, seminar, it was a really awesome seminar, it was called a walk through, uh, walk through the Bible seminar. They had two parts, the Old and the New Testament. And then the Old Testament, uh, one of the things that described David was that he followed God with a whole heart, but Solomon only followed with half a heart. Solomon started off great. He started off following the Lord great, but then temptation crept in. When God granted him wisdom, remember he said to Solomon, because you didn't ask for wealth, fame, and, and, and a long life. You ask for wisdom. I'm not only going to give you that wisdom. I'm going to make you the wisest person ever out there. But I'm also going to grant you all these other things. And I'm going to give you a long, happy life as long as you follow me. Well, guess what? He stopped following God. And he didn't. And that, that long, happy life, like the same one that David had, he didn't quite have. There are people that say, uh, there's one pastor I remember hearing say that uh, Solomon spent 
the latter part of his life, I don't know how long in his life, spent it not being able to sleep, having massive bouts of insomnia, having men actually directly around his bed guarding him. That sounds like a, a man who abandoned God. And I think that there are people that maybe towards the end, he probably sort of begrudgingly confessed things to God. I mean, if you look at Ecclesiastes, you see somebody that deeply regrets what they did. And even there, he is trying desperately, even in the Proverbs, he's trying to make sure that his children don't make the mistakes he did. Unfortunately, many of them did, but there were a few good godly kings. And yet, despite all of this, despite the shortcomings, despite the mistakes that Solomon made, God was merciful and still allowed the Davidic line to flourish for the sake of David. And through that, Jesus the Messiah came, which I'm very grateful for because I know without Christ in my heart, I don't know where in the world I'd be, seriously. And I look at this, and I often wonder, you know, I've been, especially today, I've been asking the Lord to please search my heart. Search me and try me. There's a song that, that's involved with it, and if anybody knows it, uh, please feel free to send me a link, you know, for it. Um, it's, I think, Search Me and Try Me and Know My Heart Today. And, and it's, it's a beautiful hymn. And that's the prayer, but, you know, seriously, right now, this, especially starting today, it's been the prayer of my heart. I had to ask the Lord to help me out with something today. I have an issue that I've been, that, that I need constant help with. And that's with, it's kind of with my temper. And the one thing you don't want to do with me is tick me off, especially if you're, especially when it involves the people I love. And I'm still praying about, in prayer about this. I can't go into detail, but there's a situation occurring right now where somebody is not taking no for an answer. And I really need your prayer on this, that I respond appropriately. I'm trying to remember Proverbs 15.1, but I'm also trying to, I'm also having to make sure that I'm not being a doormat and that Ricky and I especially aren't being doormats because when I'm in protect mode, I can sometimes go way, way, way off, if you get my meaning. And I really, I, I have to ask the Lord to help me control my temper and, and, and everything. I know the Lord helps me to not do anything I'll regret. And I'm asking him in that area especially to avoid, you know, this. But uh, this person, uh, despite being asked to never contact us again, is still continuing to do so. So I'm really weighing the balances here. But I also have been having to ask the Lord to try the areas of my heart where I want to do things my own way, where I try to do things my own way, where I try to not include him. I don't know how to describe it, but I've there's there's things, and I'm sure you can relate to this, where you think that you're the only one that can do something. You're the only one that can do a particular thing. And that's, you know, constantly something that goes on with me, and it's something that I ask for prayer about. I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. But most of all, I ask the Lord, and I have to ask the Lord every day, that he remains on the throne of my heart, that I don't allow anything that would take his place. And that's what David was talking about to Solomon. Sometimes I have to fall on my knees and say, Lord, show me any area of my life that's dishonoring to you. That, that Show me if there's an area of sin in my heart, Show me it and help me to confess it. 
And sometimes you might have to do that. Sometimes you just say, examine my heart, Lord. And if there's something there that's dishonoring to you, that's offensive to you, show me it and I will and, and help and help me confess it and forsake it. I know that there are a lot of people that think if they do that, that there's something that, that, that God that, that you think God won't love you anymore for. That's not the case. That's a big lie of Satan. I've been there. I have so been there. And I've had situations where I, again, where I think I need to do things myself, but I don't go to the Lord on it. And I discover when I don't go to the Lord on it, when I don't allow the Lord control on it, I fumble and, and I fall on my face badly. And I'm encouraging all of you. I, I urge all of you to really carefully consider what it means to allow God to have the reins of your heart to as what Psalm 139 states, what verses 23 and 24 state. He's with what he states in this. He says, search me. I will read this. He says, search me and know my heart. Try me, see if there's any wicked way in me. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. I'm urging all of you to continue to pray that. Continue to pray that. That's something, you know, throughout this whole week, pray. Every day pray it. Ask the Lord, please try my heart. Try the reins of my heart. Remember what he says in Jeremiah verse 17, verses 9 and 10. Read that. I, 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 I urge you guys... I, I, encourage you guys to read that for tomorrow and meditate on it and know that he is willing to listen to you that he not only cares about what you go through but there is nothing too big there's nothing too awful for him that he can forgive and will forgive anything and everything as long as you sincerely confess it to him remember God is not mad at you, but he is so madly in love with you. He doesn't want you to buy into the lies of Satan. Allow him to till the soil of your heart. Allow him to dig deep into those recesses, those hard places that you think God can't handle and watch him work. But most of all, never hide anything from God because in the end it will get found out. Look at David, for example. He tried to hide things from God with concerning Bathsheba and it didn't work. It's only when you openly confess things to Lord, to the Lord, and you allow Him to to remove the sin, to remove what's causing it, to remove the obstacles, and drown out the lies, that He works His best in you. I've got to get going, but I wanted you to I wanted to share this with all of you, and I encourage all of you. Give me you know your feedback. I'm also going to post, again, a link to how to come to know Christ as Savior. And I urge all of you that don't know Christ, please come to know him today. I urge this so much because I don't want to see you left behind. You guys have a wonderful evening. And, again, allow Christ to try the reins of your heart. Allow him to be in control. Bye for now.